We're now well into this mini-series on market noise. We've covered the basics, we've looked at the calculations we can use to quantify noise, but now it's time to get down to business. How can we use noise analysis in a way that will potentially help us to improve our trading strategies? In this episode, I look at how different assets can be classified in terms of noise, and this will then help to inform which assets we might choose to trade with different types of strategies. Stay tuned. First off, thank you to all the people who contacted me asking me if I was okay given that I've not been producing videos over the last couple of weeks. Don't worry, everything's fine. I've just been on my summer vacation. And so now I'm fully refreshed and looking forward to getting back into this video series. This is especially the case because this is where it starts to get really interesting as we start to dig into the mechanisms we can use to help improve our decision making around our trading strategies. So without further delay, let's make a start. As we go through this session, we'll be relying heavily on the methods that we looked at previously in terms of measuring noise in a quantifiable way. And in particular, this episode will concentrate on price density. And I'll be putting this into practice across a wide range of assets to determine if some of those assets are more naturally noisy than others. But why would we want to do this? Well, the intelligence that this provides can help us decide which assets are best suited to different classes of trading strategy. So let's now take a look at the analysis. So we have the noise measurements here for 42 assets. We have 28 forex pairs, 10 stock indices, and four commodities, gold, silver, oil, and gas. And I used 20 periods for the price density indicator, looking at a rolling average over 2,000 bars. And I've concentrated here on the H1 time frame. If you remember, for the price density calculation, the higher the value, the higher the noise. And so these assets on the left-hand side here are those that are most noisy, and those on the right-hand side are the ones that experience lower levels of noise. And I've colour-coded these so that we can get an idea of how noise changes across asset classes. So the blue bars represent the currency pairs, the green bars are the stock indices, and the red are the commodities. So in this analysis that I undertook, Aussie Kiwi is the most noisy and natural gas over here on the right is the least noisy. And let's just recap on our hypothesis that we've been using up until this point. And that is that with low values of noise, these assets are more suitable to momentum based trend following strategies. And the reason for that is that we're now less likely to get whipsawed out of those trades. But the opposite is true of higher noise assets. Here, based on the hypothesis previously, these are going to be more suited to mean reversion type strategies. Which is all good, but how do we now start to look at how we research this further in terms of the impact on our actual performance in those trading strategies? Well, that's where we need to start classifying the assets. So for example, we could draw a line right down the middle here, and we could then do a direct comparison between how well a trend following strategy performed using just the assets on the right hand side compared to how it performs with the assets on the left hand side with the higher noise. And if the theory is correct, then we should see a much better performance from these assets on the right hand side. And then the opposite is true for mean reversion systems, where in this case, again, if the theory is correct, we should see that these assets on the left perform better here. But there is another approach. We could be a little bit more selective and choose only the lowest noise assets for our trend following strategy and only the very highest for the mean reversion. And then any asset that falls in the middle, we simply don't trade at all. 
and this approach will form the basis of what we're going to look at in future episodes in order to prove if this theory is correct or not. And this is what I call asset filtering based on mean or average noise. Now, there is another approach that we could take to this, which is what I tend to call instantaneous noise. And this is where we still trade a wide range of assets, but we look for the times when the noise is low in that asset for trend following systems and high for mean reversion systems. So there's two approaches there, but I'll be covering the effectiveness of both of those in future episodes. But before I do that, of course, we haven't looked at the efficiency ratio yet. And so in the next episode, I'll be doing a direct comparison between the classification that the price density gives us with that of the efficiency ratio by Perry Kaufman. And just looking forward one more episode, in this, I'll be doing the same, but instead of across assets, I'll be looking at how noise changes across time frames, because this is another area where we can turn noise to our advantage. Now, if you're a talented trader and you're looking at the potential of getting investor capital, then you'll be really interested in what Darwin X has to offer. You can click on the link at the bottom here to find out more. But that's all we've got time for this episode. Please do remember to give me a like and to share this video on the forums that you use. But now until next time, trade safe.